Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the lab. Uh, as always, you got Brandon, Alex, and Lou uh, coming at you with a, a little bit of a different topic today. Uh, I'm a little excited for this because I like stirring the pot a little bit, uh, and I like making Alex angry. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is it's kind of a, I don't know, I guess it's kind of like a fad or almost like a rewording of what's always been working, but biohacking. Um, I actually heard it, I think it was maybe a week and a half ago. I've never really thought of it as being biohacking, but I was listening to the Huberman Lab podcast and he's got protocol after protocol and was reading a little article on the Huberman Lab, but like a review and how they were talking about how it's it's basically biohacking at its finest. And I was like, okay, well, there there is again, I might as well look into this. Um, so I started looking into biohacking a lot more and I realized it's been around for a little longer than what the buzzword kind of seems to be. Um, but I guess they break it down into a few different sections, but the section we're going to kind of talk about today is really about the biohacking of the human body, right? So kind of curious, cause I looked up the definition that I had found. Um, so it was, it was the quantified self biohack, um, where basically you're, there's a lot of traction on this now since the early two thousands where individuals are trying to utilize wearable devices or using particular types of, uh, whether it's cold exposure, uh, you know, infrared saunas, modalities, things like that, uh, meditation, like ways to enhance like or optimize performance, whether if that's like mental focus and sharpness, uh, sports performance, or just overall health and wellness. Um, it's definitely become a lot more mainstream and Huberman lab has definitely like expedited its popularity, especially with like his cold plunge topic that he talked about. Um, he does a lot of topics on like trying to bring like dopamine levels to like their optimal level um, or like how he maintains a sharp focus and like his, his morning routine, which there's a ton of YouTube videos out on it. Once I looked it up and I was like, Holy smokes. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think of this just in, the more I look into it, the more they preach about how like, you know, the conscious like production, you're, you're altering your physiology to create a more uh, well-rounded human being. I was like, huh, kind of sounds like what we've been preaching with like eating right, getting enough sleep, drinking water, and then really just training smart. But I sent you guys an article today. So I was kind of curious to see what you guys thought about this. Uh, so I guess, what what did you guys think first of all? I'm curious. Alex, if you want to go first. I'm sorry, Trotter, if you want to go first. Yeah, please don't call me by your wife's name. <laughs> Trotter, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a good, a good tool to have, uh, something to be accountable, if you will, but... I still think that your foundation should be your diet, your sleep, and then um, like any other recovering thing that you can think of. But if you don't have like your diet and your sleep down, then adding all this other stuff in, it's it's like putting window 10 on a car when you need to work on the engine to get it to start. <laughs> I, that's I mean, a, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Like it, it looks cool or it's like putting your Instagram name on your, on your window of your car. Like nobody cares. Oh my gosh. Have you seen that? Yes. Oh boy. Well, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just think, I think it's stupid, but how about you, Brandon? I don't get why we keep trying to reinvent the wheel with a new name. The what? They just keep trying to reinvent the wheel with a new name. Yeah, yeah. It's the same same stuff has been around forever. I mean, your body's going to adapt to whatever you put through. A lot of this science has been out for a while. I mean, you're just trying to make money on something that's already been out there. Yeah, thank you. I was kind of curious. So, like, I found a list of different bio, like, types of biohacking. I'm curious. So, they have nutritional biohacking, biotechnological, cognitive, lifestyle, implant um man it, it just keeps going on so like the i'll hit maybe like three or four of the big ones that i thought were kind of interesting so like nutritional biohacking so like manipulating your diet and nutrient intake based off 
um, ways in order to optimize your health performance. This includes fasting, personalized nutrition plans, and dietary supplements. But that's that's not nutrition and dietetics. That's nutritional biohacking. Oh, man. You're just not selling them the name. Yeah. Like you're trying to, like you think of hacking, you think like you're getting into something that you shouldn't be. And it's like the body is going to respond to it. You get in the cold water, you're going to release more dopamine and all this kind of like all that stuff, not like a hack. It's just, yeah, it's a it's fact. Stuff that's always happened. Yeah. Wow. I'm just going to redo the whole thing and make it to the name to make sense and see if I can make money off of it. People will do whatever except work hard. Like that's yeah. that's simply it. Like if you if you go to the gym and you push yourself to where like you're fighting for air, like you're, then you're probably doing a good job. Or if you're sweating profusely, or you know if you get slightly lightheaded, that's all very normal. If there's a burning sensation when you're doing a bicep curl, like you're probably in the right space. Mm -hmm. And it's not it's not a hack. It's not a bicep curl hack. You just do it. There's yeah. some other fun ones. Like the it sounds too good to be true. It's high too good to be true. Yeah. Everyone common wants sense. the quick shortcut. I mean, common sense can take over in, in the fitness injury pretty quick. Common sense has gone out of the building. Like the the cognitive enhancement one just makes me laugh. So it's like uh, aiming to optimize mental function, um, techniques like nootropics which are quote unquote the smart drugs to enhance like cognitive function um uh, brain training exercises and neurofeedback like i i can understand how maybe that would be i don't know if that's a biohack that if you, it's, it's like the old saying right if you like you don't use it you lose it kind of a thing like i don't necessarily i would consider that to be a, a hack per se but what i think is it's kind of like the whole buzzword with like functional right you're going to do functional training we're going to have a biohack for improving your physiological performance it's like no you you don't eat like an idiot and go to mcdonald's every single day then yeah you're going to see improvements um just i don't know very good there's multiple me. studies that come out that say that you're going to get higher brain function than when you do like cardio versus like all these brain quiz games yeah puzzles, whatever you want. you're gonna get more beneficial with your brain through cardiovascular work than any other word puzzle or some stupid little game you're gonna play on your phone thinking you're gonna activate your brain like that one game one round uh where you try to get words with wordle certain yeah wordle like, <laughs> all you're doing is wasting time yeah i mean i definitely think it's nice to stay sharp and kind of keep everything moving along but i mean if you have a mentally engaging job like how much more extra do you really need to do? Um, Not much, because these kids wear me out. <laughs> that burnout, but I mean, huh? I mean, that's not like a bad thing either, because no, like we, we have to go from being able to speak to an eight-year-old to get them to understand what we're trying to say to mm -hmm. within 10 seconds, flipping the script and speaking to a professional athlete and all in between. Yeah. So, yeah actually a lot of the fun stuff we talked about so like it's, we had a class today it's a we talked about <laughs> it's alex trotter's biohack for talking to children and professional athletes yeah <laughs> that's awesome now we actually talked about like if you had to put it in like physical therapy terms and then how do you relay that like how do you put it in layman's terms um but actually brandon what you bring up is actually really important i think um like the that's optimization right. like like you <laughs> using aerobic training for like overall brain function. Um, there's actually a lot of cool studies as well on like uh, young athlete, like skill development and like the neuroplasticity in the brain with the use of aerobic training, so like doing some form of like aerobic activity, getting the blood pumping, getting the blood oxygen, nutrients, everything kind of circulating, and then trying to teach a skill. Like it's, it's science. It works. Like it works. So like the fact that people are like, no, let me just get up my, uh, you know, my smart drugs, my, my new tropics, let's pop some of those bad boys. And then let's go try to read a book. Like, let's uh, see how much Adderall we can take and let's get it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. New, new tropics for people that don't know, it's just either like Ritalin, Adderall, which is kind of the same thing. You got to be prescribed it kids. 
and then caffeine can it can technically be like a nootropic yeah I'm trying to think what are just like some common like hmm. yeah it's kind of crazy brain function hmm. no nah, we won't get on that we won't talk about that today um but it's just kind of interesting to see how people use a buzzword they make profit off of it and then at what cost do you see other people maybe not getting the same experience with these quote unquote quick fixes? Um, like how many well, people are looking at these for? Yeah, well, that, they'll just spin it. Well, that quick fix didn't work for you. This this is the one that's going to work for you. You need, you need to go dip your toes in a cold plunge. And then that, that's what's going to trigger it for you, not your caffeine intake. You just need to try that. And then when that doesn't work, you can flip it to the whatever else. It's just horrible sales. Yeah. I mean, I think the only, I mean, if you kind of look at it at a different paradigm though, like on the opposite side of things, if it's getting someone to be more active or getting someone to maybe do more uh, physical activity than what they would have beforehand, there might be a little bit of like a positive to it. I'll kind of play the devil's advocate. And if it gets you to eat a little bit better, maybe you start eating within a particular window, like with like the nutritional biohacking. Um, intermittent fasting has been around quite a while. I mean, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. think that's anything new, but like if it does all of a sudden convince you to give it a shot and it works for you, did it do any harm? Mm -hmm. Are we putting maybe out that it's a quick fix? That's probably not a great thing. Yeah. But, I think that's more like just lifestyle. Yeah. Like yeah, I gotta do that change. more because I just, I can't like eat breakfast. Like it, like I just hurt my stomach the rest of the day if I have like breakfast. Or it's more beneficial for me to just train on an empty stomach, get through that part, and then I can have something to eat. That's just how it works for me, and that's why I do it. But, so but maybe, you maybe also not, go ahead. Maybe not the whole like I don't do like the crazy sixteen whatever hour fast it is. Say if I go to bed at nine o'clock and I just happen to get done working out at eight thirty and I get something in by nine o'clock, you know I do have that twelve hour fast or whatever. But I mean that's just it just works for me. See that that's what I was getting ready to to say is you you understand that you're you're in a fasting state while you're sleeping. Like that that counts as part of your fast. People do these 12 hour fasts, but then they sleep for eight hours beforehand. So it's like, dude, you you just did a 20 hour fast. <laughs> like <laughs> no wonder you're hungry and then you're gonna overindulge and then you're gonna make yourself sick and then you're not gonna go to the gym. So here we are back in this loophole. That sounds horrendous. That's a long time to not eat food. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would be the angriest human alive. Ugh. I'm not saying other stuff is like beneficial or whatever. I just think it's somebody just trying to resell something that's already been sold to make money off of it all at the same time. Yeah. If you break them down individually. I mean, they're all very highly beneficial things. So just to have one person put it in the subcategory of biohacking and then trying to say they reinvented the wheel just not it yep. try my way it works better for you but my way's also been around for multiple years by the way <laughs> it's like people yeah. with like fat burning pills too like you go all of a sudden you go to walmart or gnc and you buy this fat burning pill and you think okay now you're going to start doing things to help maybe speed that process up so now you're starting to exercise a little bit more you're starting to eat a little bit healthy did the fat mm -hmm. burning pill work i don't know probably not but those little lifestyle changes you did Probably where your results came from. Right. Not that pill. Exactly. Now, one thing I would say that might be a little bit more of like a like a biohack is maybe if the person didn't have like a great awareness of their body, um, like they might not understand like what particular foods do to them, like like for example, uh, or like maybe like what alcohol does to their system, like the whoop, for example. Like I know we talked about like my different like fitness trackers and stuff like that in a previous episode. So if you guys want to go listen to that, I, I encourage you to listen to that before I continue. Um, but having that little bit of an insight maybe into how you only got four hours of sleep affects your body this way. And this is what your hate, heart rate, very not your hate rate, <laughs> your heart rate variability ended up changing or dipping, or maybe it wasn't as great. Um, how those different, like maybe an insight into your habits affecting you overall. Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I would consider that a biohack, just more of like an insight, 
maybe you just don't have a great relationship with your body or maybe you're just <laughs> nose blind or you know I don't even know how else to describe it but I think that might be one way that they have it as like a you're wearing the the tracking devices and it helps on that kind of an insight to hack your body a lot of those things aren't even like valid I mean I don't really care like I use my heart rate like when I'm doing my conditioning stuff I'll use my eye watch mm -hmm. I watch for like my heart rate stuff is it accurate mm -hmm. Don't really care as long as it's consistently reading what I wanted to read. That's all I need. So if I'm yeah. like, my heart rate says it's, I'm doing a 190, so I got a max pace and it's really 185 or 192, whatever it may be, as long as it's consistently the same, where my resting heart rate drops down, I hit the next rep, so on and so forth. As mm -hmm. long as it's being consistent, that's all I care about. I don't really care how accurate it is. Makes for sense. me personally. Yeah. I'm not going to send some, yeah, some. I mean, I, obviously, I watch for instance, but to add something on top of that, like an actual heart rate strap <laughs> and things like that, I'm not going to get too accurate with it, in a sense, for me personally. Yeah, because you, you kind of know what to look for. Yeah, four or five beats a minute to me doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. You start getting into, like, training for, like, oh, the GPS is a little more accurate, but you get, like, one of the stepper counts stuff like that where your stride length and all that stuff looked different like back in the day when we had to do that uh you train for like maybe a 5k or a marathon where your distance seems to be a little bit more set in stone that would mm -hmm. kind of be a little bit more of a, a different story but for the most part technology's come a long way most of it's pretty accurate but it's not like dead set mm -hmm. yeah same thing with the loop like i don't know i never really like looked in a whole lot of detail with the loop of how actually accurate or valid it is yeah there definitely is a lot more data out now than what there used to be when it first came around. And it's actually getting better in my opinion. Um, but actually you brought up a, an interesting point about how accurate it is. It's like, you guys remember when we had the, the interview with uh, TJ from Yale and they were talking, and I think Abby even brought this up, Abby Quinn from Yale brought this up too, about how they would utilize the force plates and see what their vertical max jump was. And then that's how they would augment their training for that day. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily call that a, a biohack per se but i mean it is insightful training um I don't it's, know a, it's, how... a coach, it's a coaching hack yeah yeah thank you yeah that's a better way to put it not necessarily a biohack but a better coaching hack um but, i mean i'll i'll put a shameless plug in here but one of the greatest hacks that you can potentially do is just hire a coach like they it, it's not a the rest of your life decision it's just think about it for a month or two until like you feel comfortable, then you can go out on your own and do it. Like watch how much like better results that you get if you just hire a coach. It takes all the thought process out of it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean that that's literally like our job. Like we watch you and we study you for that entire hour. And then like we help you outside of that too. Be like, hey, I I obviously you're a little sluggish today. Like, how was your sleep last night? Did you eat before coming here? When did you mm -hmm. eat? How much did you eat? Like you, you don't need like all of these systems, like these, these little biohacks and like stuff like that. Those should be like a last uh, resort. Like you should be in the top 1% of mm -hmm. whatever thing you're training for. And then you can start using those things. In my opinion, that's obviously my opinion. Like, I don't know if you don't see like NFL players or MLB players or NBA players, like using all of this stuff, then you're not qualified either. Yeah, I mean, look at how many people have gotten to the that place without anything or anything special like that, tracking and like a lot of the people that now they're like, for example, Patrick Mahomes is a really big whoop athlete. Um, he didn't have that when he was at Texas Tech that I know of or when he was in high school, but yet he is in and playing at a very high level uh, in the NFL. But maybe he's going to prolong that longevity of play by having a little bit more insight as to how his body's feeling with training and the different stressors that he goes through, but you'll never know. Like, I mean, look at, look at Tom Brady, Tom Brady's longevity, like goat of being in the NFL, right? Did he use any type of fitness tractors that we know of? No, or did he I just no basically, I've, I've never read his TB 12 thing, but yeah, go. <laughs> you look at like LeBron. He says he puts like 1.2 million into his body every year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I'd be curious to see what, what biohacks they're using in order to, like, maintain the longevity of their careers. 
Um, it's it's a heck of a lot. He hires a chef. Sounds like he hires his own personal trainer. It's just everything yeah. that you can do at just a, at a much larger scale. Yeah. Yeah. Physical preparation, eating, sleeping, making sure mm-hmm. all of those things are hitting on all cylinders. It's really one of the like we we've, like we've said from day one. Literally, get the big three on your side, and you can be dangerous. Just yeah, yeah. Man. I think that's one of the hardest things that we see, like as coaches as well, is the fact that like um, I used to call them like program hoppers, where it was like <laughs> they they would do this set program for like three or four weeks, and then all of a sudden they were like, oh, it's not working for me anymore, and they jump to this new one, and then they'll hit like a PR or two like the very first week, and then they're just like, oh, this is the one, and then they do that for a couple more weeks goes stagnant switches programs hits a pr it's like it, it's not the program that you're on it was what you just did previously <laughs> like it's it's really weird you haven't been exposed to it enough yeah but like it, it's hard watching kids like go through this and it's one of those things where it's like ah it's just one of those things you're gonna have to learn on your own apparently because you're being hard-headed so have fun but Behind the neck presses are not going to get you monstrous shoulders. Be my guest, though. Have at it. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Oh, man. Anything else you guys want to talk about with the biohacks? Yeah. Sign up to no name. We'll take all the hacking out for you. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, little plug there. I love it. I love it. Not being so serious. Yeah, I mean that that that's your job. Yeah. yeah. Literally your job. And um, if you don't trust us, whatever. We'll we'll have you we'll have uh our kids whoop your kids' ass in all sports. All right. All right. Gauntlet laid down by Alex Trotter. Mm-hmm. But we hope you guys enjoyed our, our small discussion here on biohacking. Um, we will see you guys in the next episode.